You should never use seafoam if you love carbon deposits. You should never use seafoam if you have an aversion to anything that works as stated on the can. You should never use seafoam if you, you don't like easy? <laughs> In other words, my friends, seafoam does work. We've seen this time and time again here on YouTube. Go ahead, type in seafoam in the YouTube search box and see what comes up. You might see a video or two from Chris Fix or maybe even one from Project Farm, all of which have multi-millions of views. And the verdict is, it actually does work. I know, I know, I know. It sounds crazy that you can just spray something in a can into your motor and actually get a little tune-up, but it works. Hello friends, I'm Jimmy with One Road. And today, <laughs> today, today is gonna be the day that we finally get seafoam smoke in my 1995 GMC Suburban. In the past, I've filmed two videos where I've attempted to get some major smoke, one of them using the standard pour can of seafoam and poured it directly into the throttle body, and the other one using the spray can and spraying that directly into the throttle body. Both times, I was not successful at getting smoke. That's kind of the fun of it. It's getting this huge plume of smoke knowing that that seafoam went to work during the hot soak and then driving your car afterward and feeling the difference. So how are we going to get the smoke? Well, we can start by reading the directions. Guys, if I don't get smoke this time, then this has to be the cleanest, most carbon deposit free motor to ever live on YouTube ever. If we read the first part of the directions, it says number one step is to warm up the engine and turn off accessories and shut engine off. It also says do not use an enclosed area and make sure exhaust is well ventilated. And last but not least, do not spray seafoam spray into the mass airflow sensor. That is a very important point. It does matter where you're actually spraying this seafoam and you never want to spray it into a sensor. You're always going to want to spray it right before the throttle plate of your throttle body. The first part of the directions on the can said to warm up the vehicle. You can see I just started mine and it's very cold, so I'm going to take it out on a drive. I am out here driving up some crazy hills, just trying to get this motor nice and hot. You can see my temperature gauge has creeped up and I think this is good enough. I can turn around and head back home. Now that the engine is nice and warm, I'm going to go ahead and remove the air cleaner box. In this case, we're just going to remove these two wing nuts. Once I have those removed, I'm just going to lift up on this lid. <laughs> And now you can see underneath that lid was the air filter. This right here is my throttle body. Well, it is kind of deep down in there, but this is the opening for it. You can see I have two big injectors here and just underneath those injectors, you can see those flaps opening and that is my throttle body. Those flaps opening and closing are actually the throttle plate and that is where we're gonna be spraying our seafoam. In this case, my vehicle is from 1995, so it may look drastically different than yours. The bottom line is you wanna pull off your intake tube right before your throttle body. And the reason to do that is because you're gonna use this little red hose to slide inside right before that throttle plate, and then you're gonna reattach your intake tubing. In my case, I don't need to do that. This truck does not have a mass airflow sensor. And so therefore, I can have all of that stuff off spraying the C foam right into the throttle body and not have an issue. All right, so let's get this bottle opened. So take a look at the straw and this black mechanism here that they use to shape the straw. What they want you to do is use this curved part here to go inside of your throttle body and the rest of this tubing here is going to be attached to the seafoam bottle. In my case, because I don't have to wrap this thing into the intake tube and reattach everything with the curve, I'm actually going to cut the curve off just like that so that now I have a perfectly straight straw that I can use to spray down inside right in front of the throttle plate. I'll simply attach the straw to the seafoam bottle just like that and this is my setup guys right here. I've now started the motor and I'm going to wait for it to warm up again. I have electric fans so once those fans kick on I will know that this motor is up to operating temperature. Operating temperature I think is key. If I'm understanding this correctly you want all of the deposits 
exits, the oils, everything inside the motor to be nice and hot and gooey. That's when the sea foam is really going to get to work. And that hot soak, the motor actually needs to be hot. So that's what I'm doing here just to make sure that I do get smoke out of that tailpipe after the hot soak. Okay guys, the fans have cycled on and off a few times. Now I know the motor is hot enough for me to begin the seafoam application. All right guys, here I go. Here goes nothing. Spraying it right on top of the throttle plate, switching sides also. And I'll go ahead and shake this thing up a little bit. It will spray more. I'm also increasing the RPMs of the motor by about 500 to 1,000 uh, RPMs more than the stock idle speed. I can hear the motor kind of choking on this stuff, but I think that's what you want. I can really feel the motor shaking a little bit. We're gonna call this Operation Just Get Smoke. This bottle is empty. I'm gonna shut the car off now, and we're gonna let it sit for five to 15 minutes. The hot soak is now over. The truck has been sitting for about 15 minutes. Now we can start it up and look for that elusive smoke. Sounds pretty good. Man, this motor sounds so good. <laughs> All right, guys, well, what do you think about that? There was a little bit of smoke. I watched back the footage and I, there was some smoke, definitely some smoke, more than I have gotten before. But it still isn't that billowing plume of smoke that you usually see in the videos on YouTube. Yeah, I do realize that I have two other videos on YouTube doing the same thing to the same truck, and this is gonna be the third, but I've been trying, and you know, as they say, the third time's the charm. Well, I guess that's true. There was more smoke than before. Not as much as I would have hoped, but hey, maybe that just means that this motor is fairly clean on the inside. Yeah. We'll just go with that. I certainly was giving it some good revs and I did see some smoke on the footage, just not as much as I thought. So anyways, guys, comment below and let me know what you think. And if you guys have tried Seafoam before and how much smoke you get. Also, if any of you guys drive a GMT 400, you know, the CK 1500, these same trucks, the Sierra, the Silverado, the Tahoe, the Yukon, the Suburban, even the Escalade, and you've done this to your vehicle and you've got tons of smoke, I would like to hear from you let me know down in the comments below other than that guys the last thing that you got to do is take your car out for a drive and they say to drive pretty aggressively so that you can burn off any other carbon deposits inside of the motor that need to be burned off and so that's what i'm going to do right now as for this video i think that'll do it so thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video as well as all of my other videos if you're not a subscriber hit that subscribe button and oh by the way hit that thumbs up for me too if you can. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram at One Road Garage and also my website oneroadgarage.com and I will see you in the next one. Peace out guys. <sighs> oh, you know what? I almost forgot. Should you use sea foam? Yes. Don't you see the YouTube videos? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs>